Hey everybody, this is Jace from RMUS, and I'm here with... Jake from Ellistair. From Ellistair, and obviously we're looking at this guy today. Correct. What is this guy? Tell us about it. So uh, up here we have uh, Ellistair's Orion 2.2, our, uh, our hex copter, which is a tethered uh, UAS system, uh, complete with aircraft, ground control system, and a tethering station uh, for operation. The aircraft itself uh, is NDA compliant, as well as IP54. Right, so the light rain, that's a question that everybody always asks. Reasonable rain, you're gonna be good. NDA compliance, it's becoming a bigger and bigger thing uh, with our industry today. And part of that is like, what I love about this is, and I hadn't thought of initially was as a closed system, right? So you have the tether, again, it is a tethered system. Part of that tether is it's getting power and data. Correct. Right. So, so your, your flight controls, your your payload feed, mm -hmm. whatever that may be, is, is being uh, transmitted primarily all through that tether line. Right. So Our for mark. from a security standpoint, we have a line that's coming direct instead of a wireless signal Correct. of sorts that's broadcasting. Right. So that's Absolutely. that's part of what makes this such a secure system and something that um, is all is of course appreciated. But you know, you mentioned this. This is something that people always ask is like, you know, what does it require? What does it take? Well, we've got this system right here. You have a control station, effectively a laptop, mm -hmm. as well as the power generation, and that's it. Um, it's this, it's basically two Pelican case, as well as the tower. And one of the things that we've appreciated about this is quick deployment. You can be from in the boxes to in the air in about 15 minutes. I was gonna say 15 minutes, and that's following our, our extensive checklists and, mm -hmm. and whatnot to, to ensure safe operation. Uh, but yes, as you had mentioned, the two Pelly case, quickly deployable, um, easily transportable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and uh, that kind of leads us to the next little bit here is the fail safes that you have built into this redundancy upon redundancy. Yes. Um, one, and, and that's one of the things that people ask about a lot with tethered systems. Like, what happens if I lose power? Well, you have a solution for we that. Have a, uh, we have an onboard battery that while, while in flight, um, will be continually uh, charging up and topping off. The aircraft itself being a hexcopter, this will be able to land if you were to lose one prop, which is five props. Um, additionally, we have our main command and control via the tether line, um, but in the event that tether line is cut, there's a secondary uh, communication from the aircraft directly to that ground control system, the laptop you alluded to, mm -hmm. um, as well as a third method of control for the aircraft with a backup RC controller as well. So at any given moment, you have extensive command and control over the aircraft um, as it pertains to coming down. All right. And <laughs> if those many things have a problem, we have a built-in parachute as well. Correct. Parachute that is, uh, that is built into the, the framework of the aircraft. Uh, so, you know, no matter what the case is, right. we, have, we have you covered Let's from fail-safe. Redundancy on top of redundancy, which Absolutely. is, you know, something that everybody always likes to hear. And then, you know, let's kind of jump into us again. This is a tethered system. It's manufactured and created as a tethered system. So what kind of power requirements do we need for this system? So Orion 2.2 needs 230 uh, volts, as well as coming from a 4 kilowatt generator inverter power. Mm -hmm. As long as we have that steady flow of power coming into our tether station, um, that allows our aircraft to fly for up to 50 continuous hours at up to 330 feet of altitude. Right. So as near as matters, pretty much as high as you're legally allowed to fly, for starters. And as and, and power requirements wise, I mean, it's not anything super special. This is stuff that's commercially available. It's, Absolutely. It's not hard to be able to get something that can power this aircraft. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it fits in the back of the vehicle you had, which is a pickup Jeep. So it's not insane. Um, for that as far as that goes. Um, and again, that was one of the things about this is not only is it the tethered system that's very effective, it's very redundant, but the payload options as well. There's, you have several payload options that are already available. Let's talk about what we have right here. So uh, on this Orion right here, we have the XQT AI, um, which gives up to 40X zoom, dual channel, day and night, has a thermal, has a, a object identification and tracking capabilities. Um, additionally, this payload is, is easily removable and swappable. Um, a few other options that we have would be your Next Vision Raptor, as well as an XQT with an LRF functionality uh, for laser range finding missions. Our one of our favorite payloads is our payload development kit, mm -hmm. which really allows the uh, the users to, you know, if there's a certain camera or su uh, suite of software they want to incorporate, we allow that. The aircraft itself, uh, in this configuration, can carry up to five pounds, but it is a two-in-one. We do have a heavy lift configuration, 
with that payload development kit, we can now carry up to 11 pounds. Right. As well as power said payload via that payload development kit. Right. And if you're paying attention to the way this configuration is here, is that these arms are removable. That heavier lift payload configuration is still basically this core, but the longer arms, the larger motors, those Long just, drops. those attach to these same mounting exactly. points here, no other modification necessary. And again, you're making that large payload. And that's what kind of kind of leads into the next thing is that the use cases for this, I mean, the obvious ones being surveillance and tactical scenarios, that kind of stuff. But it's that combination of that payload development kit and the tethering solution and that heavy lift that really, I kind of look at this as like, yes, it's a drone. It does the functions of a drone, of an unmanned aircraft. But you can also use this as a mobile antenna or tower system effectively. Oh, no. You know, you couple all those things together. It's like, okay, we can develop a payload that goes under here and we can use it as a tower. It's not just a drone. It can communicate with a whole bunch of things beyond that. Absolutely. The, uh, the, the multi-mission sets that we can mm -hmm. accomplish with, with this aircraft and the configurations and the ease of change into those configurations mm -hmm. to simply swap out um, you know, an ISR camera payload for a tactical mesh network node uh, mm -hmm. radio repeater or something along those lines. Very simplistic, two clicks, and able to quickly adjust the mission mm -hmm. or having those said missions and planning it out and understanding which configuration you want to bring right. into that fight. Um, it, it's really about addressing you know, multiple, as, as, as many different use cases as we can, getting this aircraft to 300 feet and keeping it there for 50 hours. Mm -hmm. What types of things can we accomplish that are, that are true value adds and bring something to the mission right. and really enhance the, the client's capabilities? Right. You know, you get that communication capability. You get stuff where you have very terrain or out of you know, line of sight mm -hmm. issues and stuff like that. This can really help to bridge the gap on that. Um, so again, it, it's extremely powerful. You couple all of these things together and you have a system that's really very versatile. Without a doubt. For and, sure. Uh, ruggedized too as well. I mean, it, the places that we operate and, and getting to and from places, uh, we, we put it through the ringer mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we, we, we do stand by uh, you know, that ruggedized classification mm -hmm. of the system. Awesome. I mean, and that makes sense. That's exactly where it's supposed to be is, is putting itself in harm's way and, and, and running right. along with wherever you need to operate that. So we've loved having you guys here. We appreciate doing that. We definitely want to look at putting some more content together in the future. So we hope you enjoyed this content and make sure you stay subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell for the latest in drones and robotics.